In this lecture, we'll look at the uh, variety of different types of integer that C offers, including the different sizes of integer and the choice of signed versus unsigned integers. We'll also examine the numerical ranges of the different types. This lecture assumes basic familiarity with base 2 numbers. If you need a refresher on that subject, consult the review material, in particular the lecture on data representation. As you know from prior study, the more bits we use for an integer, the higher a binary value we can count to before reaching the integer limit. C offers no fewer than four different integer sizes, letting you trade between the memory used by an integer variable and its numerical range. Lines uh, 5 through 8 show declarations of all four different sizes of integer by increasing size. The smallest integer is the uh, familiar care. Ignore that signed for the moment. We'll have more on it later. If it seems odd to call this an integer type, recall that care variables simply hold ASCII numbers and that you may do all manner of integer arithmetic on them. C has no specialized care type the way other languages do. C's care is really a synonym for very small int. A care occupies just one byte, of course, and a standard int typically occupies four bytes. Halfway between is a short, a two-byte int. And there is one more integer type that is nominally even longer than an int, a long. So does a long occupy 8 bytes then? Not necessarily. On almost all machines, it occupies 4 bytes, and is thus no bigger than an int. This brings up an important point about C's integer sizes. A care is guaranteed to occupy 1 byte, but the only guarantee of sizes for larger integer types is that each larger type occupies at least as many bytes as the one before it. So character is less than or equal to short, less than or equal to int, and which in turn is less than or equal to long in size. Technically, they could all be one byte long, or the latter three could all be four bytes long. In practice, however, it's two bytes for a short and four for an int or a long. C99, by the way, offers a long, long type that's guaranteed to be eight bytes long. Okay, so why do we even have a long then if it's always the same as int? Because historically, some machines had 2-byte ints, while others had 4-byte ints. Long was a way of guaranteeing 4 bytes. And those old 2-byte machines are rare these days, but you'll still see older code that uses either short or long to ensure 2 or 4 bytes and eschews all use of what was once a size unpredictable int type. All this ambivalence about integer sizes is fortunately not one of the things that C has passed on to other languages. Java and C Sharp, for instance, have four different integer sizes, too, but they're very specific about the number of bytes each occupies. So, for all these trade-offs of integer size, what do you get in the way of numerical range? The ranges for each integer size, in integer size are as follows here. And please regard these values as assigned vocabulary. Any professional C developer knows them by heart. One byte has a range between negative 128 and positive 127 and note that that covers all the ASCII codes. 2 bytes goes from negative 32768 to positive 32767, 4 bytes from a little less than negative 2 billion to a little more than positive 2 billion. And if you get all the way up to not, uh, 8 bytes, you can go a little below negative 9 quintillion up to positive 9 quintillion and a little bit more, which I suppose would cover even the national debt. This is probably a good time to add another vocabulary requirement, by the way. Any C programmer also knows the powers of 2, by heart, up to 2 to the 16th. So, add these to your vocab list, and I'll do them from memory here, without looking at the transcript, just to show that I'm not asking you to do anything that I wouldn't do. The powers are 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, 16, 384, 32, 768, and 65,536. You should also know that each additional factor of 2 to the 10th is roughly another 10 to the 3rd, because 10,024 is close to 1,000. So, 2 to the 10th is a little over 1,000, 2 to the 20th is a little over a million, two to the thirtieth, a little over a billion, etc. So here's a little in-lecture question based on that. And, and try to do this by first memorizing those powers of two and then reasoning it out mentally without reference to the powers written down in the transcript. 
This is the sort of question that you might get as vocabulary in one of our tests. So question one, what's the square root of 4096? Again, do this by reasoning about powers of two and using your memorized values. Don't use a calculator. So coming back from a pause there, since 4096 is two to the 12th power, its square root is half that power or two to the sixth, 64. And if you found that question hard, then practice at this sort of reasoning with powers of two. C programmers, especially any doing embedded software, OS software, compression software, etc., all can reason like this in their head. Here's another one. I have a struct type that occupies 32 bytes. Exactly how many of these structs can I fit into one megabyte of memory? Remember, one megabyte is not a million bytes. It's the power of two just over one million. Again, do this in your head without reference material, not even the transcript, and without a calculator. So coming back from a pause there, 32,768 of them. One meg is two to the 20th bytes of memory, which you know by heart. Divide that by 32, or two to the fifth, and you're canceling out five powers of two, leaving just two to the 15th which you also know from memorizing is 32768. Once you get the idea, you can make questions like this up all day long, and you know that's what I'm gonna do for a test, so beat me to the punch by making up some of your own until you're comfortable with power of two reasoning. Now returning to our integer declarations, let's look at lines 10 through 13 of the example code. These are again declarations of four different integer sizes but of unsigned form, obtained by adding the keyword unsigned before each integer declaration. Ordinary signed integers, like those on lines five through eight, can represent negative and positive values. But a slight change in integer format, which we'll look into in detail in an upcoming lecture, provides an unsigned integer whose lowest possible value is zero, but whose maximum value is twice what an equivalently sized signed integer could obtain or could contain. So here's yet another block of numerical vocabulary, the numerical ranges of unsigned integers of various sizes. One byte goes from zero to 255, two bytes from zero to 65, 536, four bytes zero to a little over four billion, and eight bytes from zero to a, a little over 18 quintillion. For a signed integer like uh, UI here, this test, if, uh, if UI is less than zero, is always false. But we can count twice as high in UI without reaching overflow, see the next lecture segment on that, as we can in a signed integer. And we can now explain the signed keyword on line five here. For most integer declarations, a signed integer type is assumed unless you add unsigned. But oddly, this is not so for care declarations, where you may get a signed or unsigned care depending on the compiler. Explicitly using the signed keyword ensures assigned care. This is the only place you'll see that keyword in C, and it generally doesn't matter to you if you're only going to store an ASCII code in the character, because ASCII codes only go up to 127, and thus they fit in a signed or an unsigned care. In the next segment, we'll look closely at the printfs on line 15 and through to 19 here. But for now, at least note that there is a special format specifier, percent %u, for printing unsigned integers. And a bit of external research in your favorite external C references here. Answer this question. May I use unsigned alone to declare a variable, e.g. unsigned myVar? And if so, what does this do? Coming back from presumably a bit of outside research. Yes, you can, and it's equivalent to unsigned int.